This is Martin Carlyle with Magic Padding Oracle from Pico CTF 2018. Can you help us retrieve the flag from this crypto service? Connect on port 6246, and there's some source code also. And then there's a link to a padding oracle attack. All right, so let's go ahead and connect to port 6246, and it says, here's a sample cookie, and what's your cookie? So let's just give it back the sample cookie. And it'll tell us that our username is guest, we're not an admin, and our cookie is expired. All right, now let's take a look at the source code. So what the source code is going to do is it will decrypt whatever cookie we give, and then it's going to use JSON. And JSON is a format for encoding data. We'll look at the Wikipedia entry for that in a minute. And we're going to get out the username, if you're an admin, and when it expires. Okay, and so you'll see that JSON looks sort of like this. So we'll have a string that has a, a key and a value, a key and a value, and a key and a value. And so from our particular example, our keys were username is admin and expires. And we want the username, I guess we can leave that as guest. We'll set is admin to true, and we'll need an expiration time that's greater than now. Okay, so that's that's a good start. And now let's take a look at what it talks to us about with a padding oracle attack. So the key thing to understand here is that we're doing AES encryption with cipher block chaining mode. And so in cipher block chaining mode, the cipher text of block N is used in block N plus one as an XOR with the plain text. We would take the cipher text from block n plus one, decrypt it with the key, then XOR that with the cipher text of the previous block to get the plain text. Now for the first block where there is no previous block, we use an initialization vector. And in the code, it looks like they've hard coded an initialization vector in there. This is an IV456. That's, that's sort of bad form. You shouldn't um, hard code your IV, you should use a random one each time. That's not actually the vulnerability here. The vulnerability is that we get the ability when we decode to find out if the padding is bad or if the padding is good. And so in padding, what goes on is there is at the end a block which has perhaps less than 16 bytes in it. So if it's one byte, then less than 16, we'd put a one at the end. If it's two bytes less than 16, we'd put two twos and so forth. So I'll show you what, what that looks like. So we have some sort of pad to put at the end of the text. And um, here we see that the padding could be like one, one, two twos, three threes, four fours, etc. So if the padding is not valid, we could tear down the session, log the error, or return an error message. So in this particular case, the code is returning an error message to us, and that gives us one bit of information about the plain text. Even if we don't know the key, we can find out if the padding at the end is correct. And we're going to exploit having that one bit of information about the plain text to be able to create our own message. So here we have, and then it's referred to as an oracle, referencing the oracle at Delphi, which you could ask questions. And here, if the padding is correct, we get back one, otherwise zero. So if we look at just like a two block cipher, we saw previously that we do this uh, exclusive or after we've done the decryption. So, we can then say that when we decrypt, we can change the C0 prime to get different values for M1 prime. And then we can know something actually about those plain texts, which is that M1 is the exclusive or of C0 and C0 prime with M1 prime. So if we, in fact, 
can find a value that gives the padding to be correct in that last byte, we will know that we've correctly padded and we can build that out to get the entire decrypted string. So in our particular case, we're, we're going to just assume that when we get it correctly padded, we end in 1-1 one, one, uh, because of the way we know that that uh, message has been formatted. There's not going to be just one character of padding already. And we can start from the end. And we keep substituting in. So once we've got the correct value of padding, we can XOR in a 2 and loop through all of the, the second bytes to figure out one which makes the second byte be 2. And then we do the same thing with 3 and 4. And so in each place, we are using 256 tests till we get the one bit saying that was correct, and we can go forward a byte at a time to decrypt the entire message. Now decrypting multi-block messages is pretty straightforward. We do each block separately, starting at the end, working our way back towards the beginning of the, of the message. Okay, so let's put this all together. We don't actually, in this case, need to decrypt the message. We know what the message looks like. We want to build a message, and we'll be able to build a message backwards in the same way by using the previous block to make this last block be what we want it to be based on knowing whether the padding is correct or not. Now I have a um, Python program for this. And so what I've done here is I have a couple functions that are helper functions. This will XOR two strings together. I got that from Stack Overflow. This will replace a particular byte in a string with a different byte. I got that from Stack Overflow. Um, I've got blocks here. This is what I want my message to look like at the very end. I want my username to be guest, is admin to be true, expires on January 1st, 2020. And then you'll note that I have 14 characters of hex 14 at the end, so it's properly padded. So each of these blocks is 16 characters long. Here's the IV, which was constant. And then blocks, I'm going to build this variable up um, from just the IV and a bunch of A's to a message which decrypts properly. So I'm going to work backwards through the blocks. So this loop goes backwards. Then I'm going to guess each character backwards. And I loop through every possible character from 0 to 256, substituting in in the blocks variable, encoding that in hexes ciphertext. Uh, I had to put a, a while true and an exception loop here because the server was, was rate limiting me and failing to connect at times. So if it fails to connect, it'll sleep for a second and then jump back up and try again. Between each connection, I wait a hundredth of a second. It asks for the cookie. I send this potential cookie. I get the response. If I see that it's invalid padding, then I try again. Otherwise, I'm going to uh, print out the ciphertext, and I'm going to repeat this until I've gotten back to the beginning of the message. Then at each point, so once I'm going from one block to the next block, I'm going to reset to fully padded and then work it all out again. So when I run this code, I run that over here, it gives me back an answer. I then connect up again. I put in that as my cookie. It gives me that guessed true. The cookie's not expired because it's set into the future and it gives me back the flag. So again, you can read more about this padding attack on Wikipedia. Uh, there's a little bit more on JSON also on Wikipedia. And good luck.